the expansion if they lose. He's that sure that, that Method are going to walk away with this one, and they should. Uh, but, uh, I mean, even looking at the at, at the bigger picture here, uh, you got, you know, Method are not in a good spot when it comes to qualifying. For them, it's good that Ad Hoc lost today. That's one less team kind of that they have to worry about. But they need to take a spot from either Reload or Creed. That's the reality here. So this is just the groundwork. They're going to need to win here. They're going to need to win their big game tomorrow uh, against Ad Hoc. And after that, it might still be a tiebreaker situation uh, where maps decided. So they need to make sure that they do a good job here, get a convincing 3-0. And they're leading with their Shadow Priest uh, Fire Mage here, Sid. Right, let's see what they can get done. Uh, this is going to be pretty tough, I would think, for Blastway Bros. They're already going after Fuston on that Restoration Shaman, and he's flexing from a ton of different DPS specializations. Now the healer. They're trying to run Boomkin Elemental as a wizard counter. Uh, and uh, with double Shaman, with double Groundy, it's definitely going to be disruptive and annoying. But Methody, you appear to have a confident plan, which is just going after the healer. They got one set up there, and now they're retreating. They're waiting for their stuns. They're going likely to go after Fuston again. In the meantime, Blastoy Bros setting up some nice crowd control, a Cyclone onto Chaz with decent damage onto Zuniaki. Can they net a dispersion, greater fade, and low health? A decent attempt from Blastwave Bros, nonetheless. However, they've got crowd control infused, and I can imagine they want to do a setup. They're swapping targets, though. They're going after Jamie. They don't have a mind games here. They're just trying to power through with the silence, and doesn't look like it's going to be enough damage to take Jamie down. I'm very surprised to not see them go after Fuston, having gotten a polymorph on him and just swapping to him. Thessia caught into a full hex at the moment. Beautiful punish by the Blastwave Bros. They've been chunking Zuniaki throughout. Look yeah, at the mana, is... actually. Yeah, this is a, kind of a similar story to the last series where for Blastwave Bros, the, their chances of qualification basically don't exist. But if they could beat Method EU, they would be completely spoiling Method EU's chances of making it to that top four. So a really important match for them. And I, I feel like Blastwave Bros, this is the most convincing composition they've brought so far. <laughs> Liv living on the Moonkin, uh, Jamie on the Elemental Shaman, which we know him for, and Feasting on that Shaman. But he's going to have to survive this setup. Big damage incoming, but nice. I feel like Livin and Jamie, if there's no cross crowd control, they should be able to keep him alive. Jamie coming in clutch, gets the hex on to Tessia, gets the lightning lasso on Zuniaki, completely denying that setup, doing a great job, trading out his body and his medallion. Let's see how much longer Blastway Bros can survive. Yeah, that was uh, Jamie's trinket grounding, like you mentioned, just using everything there to save the day. That was also Tessia's combustion. Now, uh, Houston's going to have his trinket and that spirit link for the next combustion of Tessia. So it's not a bad situation uh, if they go after Houston. And Last Word Bros are still going to be in a pretty good situation. Their defensive rotation so far has been good. And their offense as well, not looking too bad here. Lightning last one to Zuniaki. They're chunking him down. There's the Star Surge. One of these Star Surges could easily just end Zuniaki if he's not careful here, but there's a double dragon spark. Here comes the setup from Method. Full sheep on the Houston. It breaks, though he gets silenced. Jamie's in a hammer of justice. Houston now in a DR sheep. I don't think they're going to need to trade too much here. Jamie not even trading out the astral shift here. Immediately just going to get aggressive here. Living, leaping out of that ring of frost here on that Moonkin. Looking to get aggressive. He has the root solar beam ready to go here. Jamie's still not out of the woods yet. Houston, you're out of crowd control. Should be able to pick him up. No problems here. But no! no Houston with the inexperience there on the Shaman a little bit. And fortunate for him, gets Dragon's Breath there on his uh, Spirit Walker's Grace Heal. And uh, Tessia, of course, with a beautiful Dragon's Breath and Combustion there to seal the deal. What is this build, dude? <laughs> Jamie and Buston, what? What? <laughs> they're both running, they're both running the Earth Elemental Legendary. So they went like all in at the start. <laughs> they popped both Earth Elementals that have Earthquake, and they were just like planning on like knocking down the enemy team and just winning with knockdowns or something. <laughs> this is this is really strange. I actually think they might have been able to win this if they were just playing normal legendaries. I mean, if Jamie just had Equilibrium with that one-shot Stormkeeper damage, it seems really meme-y that they're both playing <laughs> into a Spellcaster team as well. Like maybe into a Melee Cleave or something. That This could be good, but... It seems really meme in this matchup, and it felt like they were actually having a decent matchup, so just switch, switch to normal legendaries. I mean, at this point, look at the cooldowns. They have everything. They just under-responded. They didn't see the combustion yet. They were probably thinking about it. Um, they could have easily traded there. Uh, I actually think if they play a more standard game, this matchup doesn't look that bad. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot. That I feel like... When we every time we do see this team, 
we, uh, Blast Wave Bros, we see them kind of adjusting uh, quite a bit with this these three players here. Uh, now we're seeing Fuston hop onto that healing role, um, and it seems like that they're doing pretty well. I mean, they did lose game number one, but do you think that they have a chance to take a game off Method EU here, guys? Mm, uh, maybe. Uh, it's definitely a chance. I feel like the composition that they have, it's really durable, right? I mean, you have so many off heals from the Elemental Shaman as well as the Moonkin, and then you have a, a huge hit of explosive damage. So uh, there's definitely the potential that they could drop someone really, really quickly. Uh, uh, like I kind of mentioned, I feel like Jamie on the Elemental Shaman is going to be able to set his team up because he's so comfortable with that specialization. But at the same time, Method EU, what they're running, it, it's good. Uh, they have a lot of damage, a lot of crowd control, lots of defensive capabilities, and they're incredible at it. So I feel like Method EU still is going to have a massive edge in this matchup. We do see Blast Wave Bros win. Uh, I feel like there's going to be a little bit of... They're going to have to play incredible, and also Method EU is going to have to slip up quite a bit. Yeah, and sometimes I mean, with these gonna... top teams, that's like what it takes. That is your win condition, is you just kind of have to m look for those moments where they do make a mistake, and it's not often we see Method EU doing that. Uh, but we'll see what they can do in game number two, Sid. I want them to go like full meme, you know, like do meme, like you should go full meme. If you're gonna play the, the Earthquake Legendaries, play Night Fae Shamans, and play Convoke Boomkin, and just sneak up on them and drop 12 Earthquakes on them and Convoke their whole team. Like if you're gonna go full meme, you, you commit. You don't, go, you don't go half and half like Livin's wow. playing Maybe a normal just going moon partial, control. Though. You huh? never go full meme, Sid. Maybe they're just going partial, you know, like... Partial meme. No, always yeah. go full meme. I, I want to see it. I actually think <laughs> yeah. double Night Fae with grounding totems to stop them from getting crowd control and just to slurp up the other team with Night Fae fusion. And uh, it does a lot of damage, actually. Double Sky Fury. I think this thing has... This comp has potential. <laughs> like, this <laughs> actually could be yeah, a Tess. real comp. The test is going to blink in and yeah. press Dragon's Breath. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Wait for Dragon's <laughs> Breath. You just wait. For, yeah. You don't press anything until Dragon's Breath's on cooldown. <laughs> this comp has potential, but not for that reason. I think it has potential <laughs> because it's you have two grounding totems. Grounding totem is one of the best buttons that you can press against the Fire Mage. You know, they pop combust. You trink your ground. You're basically guaranteed you're gonna survive the stun, or whoever's being nuked is gonna survive the stun, and you're chilling. And we saw that in the start when they went after Fuse Stun. He trinket at first, and then Jamie trinket grounded. So they have a way to survive the one shots, you know? And they have a way to win the game. If they just get a big star surge and dampening, like they can just ride that momentum and, and take somebody down. So it could happen, but I, I kind of, uh, I, I feel like Method, they also have to kind of disrespect them for that to happen. So we'll see. All right. Decent start here, just fearing Jamie. Here comes the Earthquake Elemental from Jamie. First global <laughs> cooldown on Jazuniaki. Where's the other? There's two Earth Elementals. They're trying to proc Earthquake stuns on the enemy team and then take them down while they're being knocked around. I mean, if they get really lucky and chain a bunch of stuns together, there's a stun on Tazuniaki. Tessia is trying to retreat away. He catches one Earth Elemental into a Ring of Frost, so it's only Jamie's Earth Elemental back behind the pillar with Earthquake coming up from Jamie, even allocating his Maelstrom to just kind of knock around Method EU and sort of AOE them down. Tessia getting blasted by Livin there in midfield. Good timing uh, on the balance of all things. Legendary getting a ton of crits, but now they're pillaring. They're staying at the back line. I think this Earthquake strategy wouldn't be that bad if they split up the Earth Elementals. Like when Chaz's team is turtling like this, look at his mana. He's already down like 30% of his mana. If they split up the Earth Elementals, so when the enemy team is just running away, there's always an Earthquake behind the pillar. I feel like that could be a decent option, but now the Earth Elementals are starting to fade, and with it, that bonus Earthquake effect as well. And it's such a long cooldown that if they don't get a win in that window, or <laughs> it's it, they're just going to be doing nothing with their legendaries. What's the cooldown on it? Five it's three. It's either two or three. It's really long. It's, I think it's three and a half. Uh, Bastion getting used right now. Jamie taking a little bit of damage. If you look, I mean, they've traded out so much of their offense out, and they are falling apart. Jamie could just go down. Spirit Link Totem going to be dropping. Polymorph oh. comes in. Immediate snipe of that Spirit Link Totem. Nicely done there. And I feel like this is a disaster. Jamie, no defensive cooldowns. Fuston, no defensive cooldowns. Method EU, if they can reset Combustion, I feel like this game is over. Livin's going to have to be a hero with his peels, but if you look, Chaz already down to 50% mana, just two minutes into the game, big explosive damage on Zuniaki. 
He trades the fade and it looks like he will be able to survive. But Method EU, they're setting up for that one hit KO onto Jamie. And there's really no answer on the side of Blast Wave Bros. No, Houston, he pre linked the poly and, and then he trinketed it anyway. So now they don't have, there's a double no trinket situation there on the shamans. So all they have to do is cheap Houston, kill Houston, or cheap Houston, kill Jamie. And all they have to do is just set it up. They just need to reset that combustion. They have now. They're blinking in. Fleshcraft gets counterspelled. Double Dragon's Breath. Hammer of Justice. Full Sheep. Combustion. And uh, they have a restart. They have a silence. Oh. All right. Uh, it's going to be a good night to Jamie. Basically, perfectly set up. The only one who could have done anything is Livin. If he could have root. Uh, or if you could have beamed the poly maybe, I didn't see if it was with our mastery, but if you could have beamed either the poly or the damage, or just on top of everyone there at the end, to stop uh, you know, the Shadow Priest silence, that allowed Jamie to get a global off like a Grammy or something, maybe, but yeah, that was a nice situation right after that double overlap. It's not looking good for Blastoid Bros here. The double Earth Elemental strategy, I mean, it gets them a ton of momentum. Like, they, they've got Method EU just waiting at the pillar with Earth Elementals out. They run Chaz very low on mana quite quickly. I mean, he's at 50%, not even two and a half minutes into the game. Uh, but after that point, it seems like they struggle to deal with the setups that Method EU throw their way. So during these final moments, we'll see, could Livin have done anything to keep Jamie alive here? He has Solar Beam available, Medallion to get out of crowd control. It really needs to be him that stops the crowd control. So he gets right on top of Jamie, but he gets hit by the Disorient. Uh, He's not able to interrupt. He could have trinketed, I suppose, yeah. and then Solar Beamed. And he tries to Solar Beam at the last second, but it's not going to do too much there in that final moment. Uh, and as a result, with the crowd control having been landed, Method EU were able to clean it up. Now moving on to match point. He needed to trinket that, that Disorient and then roar the polycast. If he did that, they would have lived. All right, well, let's see if they can apply that for game number three. Method EU already up two to zero on match point. Very close to closing this one out. Three to zero, which would be very good for Method EU, but not good at all for Blast Wave Bros. They are really struggling in points here in the, in the European region at the moment. And they're looking more comfortable a little bit in this series, but I mean, Method EU just gets really, is getting very, very clean wins so far in this series. Yeah. I, I feel like this is uh, kind of how we expected this matchup to go. Last Wave Bros, they, you know, they're, they're not, you can't get them entirely out of it, but they've had uh, some struggle games for sure with some of the things that's happened to their roster. So they're trying to make the best of a bad situation. They do have had moments in the game. Um, like Sid mentioned, the double rock elemental or <laughs> the earthquake elementals uh, coming in from Blast Wave Bros is a unique strategy. I kind of wonder if they got away from that and went to a more of like a traditional build that they would fare better, but. I just feel like Method U, they, they know exactly what they're doing. They have so much practice with this composition. Then I kind of wonder how much practice Blastoid Bros has into a really good Fire Mage, a Shadow Priest, Paladin, because the setups are clean and they've kind of had a difficult time actually denying them. And uh, if the Shadow Priest Mage can get enough setups in the match, it's just a matter of time before they can win. Method U now on match point. For Method EU, this is obviously a really, really important series for them. If they had lost this, it would have been an absolute disaster. They started off really slow. I think Method EU was actually 0-3 at the beginning of the circuit. Yeah, correct something me if I'm like wrong. that. Yep. So that, that's completely, I mean, I predicted at the beginning of, actually their first match was against Skillcap EU, and my prediction was the winner of that series would be the number one seed and the loser would be the number two seed. And I, I was wrong about that. Method EU, they then continued to lose their next two games. They now kind of a comeback story for them can't count them out but uh beating blast Wave bros here is definitely going to be a step in the right direction for them yeah I, I think of all of the teams even in the if you look at the na region like they've kind of we established those placements like fairly early on and there really wasn't much movement in there but i mean method U, they were at the bottom and now they've pretty much completely caught up if they do win this series they're gonna be tied in a match record they're gonna be at three and three so that's a complete like 180 from them i mean we saw them struggling a lot in the beginning of this uh in the beginning of the circuit they ran into a, quite a number of issues that meta change sort of was throwing them off balance a little bit um 
you know, they had that that one game where Zuni's like keybinds weren't working and they that ended in a loss. So unfortunate start for them, but they've completely turned things around and uh, they could very well be looking at a three to three, which would be very good. And that gives them opens up that possibility of potentially getting into that top four. So that would be absolutely huge for them. But what they need to do now in this next game is win this series. And they're looking at a three oh potentially in this next game. So please. You know what I want to see? And hear me out on this. I want to see okay. Deep Roots, Mass Entanglement, Boomkin, right? So you pop both Earth Elementals. Method E is going to run behind the pillar. You Mass Root their whole team, Solar Beam their whole team, and then double Fae Transfusion from the Shamans on the stacked up team. And just zap them. And then the, the Mage... Don't bubble uh, and press Fae Avenging Drake. Wrath and not die, no. but it'll look cool. He's soul, soul, soul shaped Dragon's Breast it. <laughs> 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 Come on, there's got to be a, okay. Lightning last with the mage on top of the root beam, <laughs> and then so, then do the night fade transfusion. I just want to see double transfusion on a stack because they're stacked up. You would hit their entire team behind the pillar. Is this value there? Okay, there's value. It'd Huge be, value. Be cool to see. I'm, I imagine see you now. win. Like you get to go out with that as a win, and then you just say, "Look what we did." Super, super deal. <laughs> you can put it up on you. your fridge. You can be like, "Look, mom, look what I did. I beat you with you with double night fade shell." <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. I think there's a reason why they picked Ruins of Lorder on here and the Blast Raid Brothers. Uh, that's, that's, that's one That's one thing, Sid. Uh, but uh, you do have a fair point, though. If, if somehow, some way, Blast Raid Bros even wins a game off of Method, Method has to win today and tomorrow, and that would put them at four wins. And I feel like there's a lot of teams that potentially could get four wins. Reload, Creed, for, uh, or not, uh, not Creed. Uh, but for sure, uh, reload and uh, integrity dam, and all of a sudden, what's going to decide that match uh, difference? So even getting a single yeah. win here could be big. Yeah, those tiebreakers, because if if it's a three-way tie for fourth place or third place, it's decided based on your overall win-loss. So yeah. if Blastwave Bros can even sneak away one game against Method EU, that might prevent Method EU from qualifying to the European finals out of the circuits. At the moment, we see both rock elementals out with those earthquakes just smacking away, trying to find an opportunity. Tessia is getting blasted. They're trying to take him out, altering back to half health. Chaz trades sacrifice. He's not gonna play around with these balance druid cooldowns, but they're getting smacked on this tombstone at the moment, all stacked up, knocked around by the Typhoon. Blastway Bros are really dogpiling here to try and get some pressure early on. Lightning Lasso onto the Holy Paladin. Big damage in coming onto Chaz. Tessia can't help, he's in a Cyclone. Zinyaki is trying to support the team a bit, managing to recover in line of sight with Chaz. Living is repositioning, but now that these Earth Elementals are going to be fading, I would imagine pretty soon it's going to be Method to use turn to strike. Yeah, and it's looking like they want to get aggressive here onto Jamie. He has already traded out his Trinket, which means likely the next setup, Houston's going to have to trade out his Spirit Link as well as his Medallion. Tessia just moments away from having a second combustion. Oh, decent damage coming in. Beautiful Fear denies the Lightning Lasso into a Silence. They're going after Fuston to get the Spirit Link totem. Fuston doesn't trade out the Trinket, but as well has to force out that Astral Shift. So the big swing of momentum there. Method U getting pressure in all the right places. And that was not even the combustion from Tessia. So Method U looking good for a clean sweep here. Can they do it? Blast by Bros, can they hold on? They need to try to get some damage. A little bit of pressure here on the Zuniaki. For the time being, Chaz has blown through so much mana. It's it's really surprising how much mana he uses early on, but it might not matter. Jamie, 50% health. Ring of Frost lands. What is Jamie going to do? Opting not to use the Astral Shift. It looks like Ascendance will be enough for Fuston, but that was a close call. Yeah, that was a nice Lightning Lasso right there. On to Tessia, no Trinket, and uh, not going to Ice Block offensively there to get his damage off. Shutting down that combustion, and that's going to save him his astral shift. And that's the thing when you're playing on your main like that, you can make those decisions. You know when to be greedy, when you can get away with it. And that's what's so nice uh, about uh, having Jamie at least on his main. Going to get a full cycle on there onto Zuni. Zuni's going to trinket that one. Lightning Lasso here onto Chas. Big damage coming out here. Living, uh, casting out a Starfire right there. Not going to be doing too much though. Going after Zuni now. Nice knock there onto Chaz. They could purge him on that Divine Favor. They will purge him on that. Now they have a chance to interrupt him here. If they can land a Solar Beam onto Chaz, they could kick mm -hmm. him on Cast and actually win the game. If they set that up, they have a Sky Fury as well. Potential here to take Chaz down, but Chaz not going to expose his tree. They're going to use that Solar Beam on Tessia instead. And that opportunity is now lost. And now it is going to be Method here. Once again, looking to get aggressive, Seth. 
Yeah, but Tessia actually gets cycloned. Mana's heavily in favor of the side of Blastway Bros. And again, they really just even need to take a game off Method EU, and they could dash their hopes to qualify into the top four. So a stressful situation for Method EU. They want to clean sweep this. They can't afford a loss against Blastway Bros, who have just had a really tough time in terms of tournament play, having their Shadow Priest poached to skill capped, uh, and then their healer Ratapai having to leave for personal reasons. Now they're just left in shambles with no healer. Fuston's trying to pick up this Restoration Shaman, but he's getting swapped to at the moment. Is he going to be able to survive here? One second left into the silence now, trying to stay next to his team, popping that Battle Master and getting some support from all of his partners. Now Chaz set up on once again with this Lightning Lasso. Lightning Lasso plus two Star Surges is likely enough damage to kill a target if they can coordinate that together. This is the Celestial Alignment from Liv and he's not getting really any value out of it. I almost would have expected him to get a Divine Shield at this point in time with no Avenging Wrath from Chaz, but he doesn't have any Astral Power. He hasn't built up any, so he can't get any Star Surges and his damage is going to be very lackluster. And now that that's out of the way, Method EU don't need to worry about it. They can start just bullying Fuston. They're just pushing on top of him at the moment. Jamie's trying to block them away, going after Chaz. Livin is chasing down Chaz, but he might regret it. He's pretty far away from Teeler at the moment. Tessia is BM, standing right on top of both Shamans. Double Dragon's Breath, Polymorph, a pre-Earthen Wall Totem from Fuston. And a solar beam onto the mage. Unfortunately, he is able to just soul shape right out of it uh, and land a ring of frost onto Livin and completely shut down this attempt. Chaz is sneaking to drink. Livin is dashing in. Livin needs to stop this drink. Can he get in line of sight of Chaz? It looks like they've stopped Chaz from drinking. They've recovered throughout that assault. And if Blastoise Bros can just weather the storm a little bit longer, they could win on attrition. Yeah, this map's actually working out quite nicely for them. Dragon's Breath on Diffused in. On Diminishing Return, unfortunately. Tessia not looking like he will be able to land the Polymorph. Combustion is available, so there is a huge hit of damage. They could take down Jamie. We'll see how Fuston does respond. He's got basically every defensive cooldown. This game going a lot better for Blastoise Bros. have had a few close calls, but they've been managing to weather the storm. They have a mana lead. They could pick up their first win here against Method EU. Method EU would love to just close it out here and now and end this series, but Lastly, Bro is definitely not making it easy, and here come the Elementals. This is uh, this is maybe the Enrage timer for Method U. The double Elementals coming in from Blastway Bros. How much damage are they going to be able to get out? Very defensive plays coming in from Method U. A big swap on Livin, though. That's going to be the Trinket Spear Link from Fuston and the Trinket from Jamie. A big overlap from Blastway Bros to keep Livin alive. Also, Livin's box game, but he's still taking damage. He's just, just dead. Polymorph, he's just going to go down right there. A, uh, yeah, what, what did Fuston actually trink it there? Because he was uh, still on Polymorph DR. Uh, unfortunately for him, he, uh, yeah, he just got immediately And their Earth punished. Elementals just came off cooldown, too. This was like their yeah. second big push <laughs> was with these Did Earth you? Elementals. They're still trying to play it out with Chaz being completely out of mat. Now Jamie surrendered. It's just Fuston. Fuston's trying to solo the whole team with the Earth Elemental. Uh, it's just not well, going to happen. This was their best game uh, so far, but despite that, Method EU going to clean this up 3 0. They're looking good now with Ad Hoc Gaming having lost their series today. If they can beat Ad Hoc Gaming tomorrow, I think it's likely certain that they'll qualify or at least get into a tiebreaker situation. So this is this is what Method EU needed. They didn't drop the ball. They had a solid performance. They're going to move into their last series tomorrow uh, in a good position. Yeah, definitely going to be riding into Sunday with a little bit of a change in momentum here. They're now tied 3-3 three to three with their their standings at the moment on this team. Uh, so that is a very good win for them. So let's see what they can do on Sunday because it is right. These guys are very, very close to go to be in on that edge. And that's got to be like a kind of a scary place to be in. We know, we know a lot of teams are very secure in that top four, you know, skill capped and creep. But Method EU, I mean, that's what is that like as a player knowing how close you are from making it or not making it? Well, you just got to focus on the next game. You can't focus, you can't look at the overall picture. You can't really focus on what happened in the past either. The only thing you can do is just look at the at the present. Okay, our next match is against the Blastoid Bros. We got to win. Okay, good. We won the series uh, and we did it as a 3-0. Okay, next matchup, we got Ad Hoc. What are we going to do, you know? And, and that's really all you can do uh, because uh, obsessing about the past and stuff like that, it's not going to really work out for you. But here, what, what did you actually trinket? Did you just trinket a Dragon's Breath? What? Uh, what? I, I didn't actually see what Fuston trinketed right there, but uh, he gets full polyed, and uh, yeah, that's game over as soon as that happens. No, 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 you didn't distract me. I was all over the place. <laughs> I, I don't know what he trinketed. He must have trinketed a, a 
he can't have trinketed the fear because the dragon's breath was full. So what silence, did he trinket? Maybe? Yeah, he must have trinketed the shadow priest silence. And yeah, or the psychic it... horror. It only makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely huh? not the move, Houston. 